Minix has been pumping out a lot of mini PCs lately, and this time we're checking out the N713. While the name doesn't mean much, it has a CPU we haven't looked at yet. So that's exciting, sort of. The N713 comes with a very nice metal case and with no external antennas. So the bottom is plastic to let in the wireless signals. It sure feels nice in the hands. It takes me back to the Intel NUC days. For better or worse. Inside this one is Intel's i7-13620H, a 10 core CPU from a couple years back, featuring six performance cores and four efficient. The iGPU side features 64 EUs or execution units, which makes it fall under the UHD graphics moniker. This was the final mobile generation before Intel shifted to its Arc graphics naming scheme. Minix includes a compact 20 volt 100 watt GAN USB-C power supply, VESA mount and HDMI cable with this mini PC. How much does it cost? Well, the 32GB RAM 1TB SSD version is available for $580 US dollars after the coupon or around $885 Aussie dollary dues. That's on the official website, while on Amazon.com it's $539 US dollars after the coupon. On the front of it is a fully featured USB-C 10 gigabit port supporting power and display. There's dual USB Type A 10 gigabit, 3.5 mm audio jack, and the power button. Minix has thrown in an Intel Wi-Fi 6 for wireless and Bluetooth. On the back, you'll find two Realtek LAN ports. One is gigabit, and the other is 2.5 gigabit. Another dual USB Type A 10 gigabit, Thunderbolt 4, which also supports powering the mini. Dual HDMI 2.1 TMDS, and the 20 volt USB-C power port, which does not support data or display. While at first glance it looks easy to open, since the N713 has just four exposed screws, the problem is the lid itself, as there's nothing to latch onto. Some groove or indent would work wonders. As it is, it's pretty annoying to open. Once finally inside, you'll find dual M.2 Gen 4 X4 slots. There's a 1TB Gen 4 Kingston SSD with no cooling. 32GB of crucial DDR5-5600 RAM is included, but the i7-13620H tops out at 5200 mega transfers and will run at that speed. To get access to the wireless card, you will need to remove the plastic tray held down by screws and watch out for the wireless cables. Windows 11 Pro is pre-installed on the included SSD and scan free of viruses and malware. Happy to report Ubuntu works fine with the N713. Alright, let's see where Intel's i7-13620H CPU sits in the performance stack. Single core Cinebench with Intel's 13th gen by today's standards is unimpressive, being surpassed by many CPUs. You can see the same with multi-core, where it also falls below average. The N713 does a bit better in the Geekbench single core CPU test, but not in the multi-core benchmark where it only matches something like the Ryzen 6900HX. This mini does a bit better in the short H.264 CPU video encoding benchmark, but worse in the longer AV1 test. Geekbench AI CPU shows a below average performer. Doing the same benchmark on the integrated graphics comes back with the worst result. Oh. The integrated graphics is also unimpressive in today's market, falling behind even Intel's own 150U CPU. It performs even worse in DX12 and the modern Steel Nomad Lite benchmark. The weak integrated graphics holds back the 12th and 13th gen Intel chips against similarly priced AMD options. You don't want to stay far away from this Intel CPU if gaming is your priority, as it can handle very little compared to AMD Ryzen minis around the same price. Some eSports and older games will be okay, but that's about it. Cyberpunk is a fail, and no upscaling will get this up to a decent frame rate. Emulation wise, I tested two PS3 games, and both of them froze when I tried to run them. I tried a different couple of drivers, but nothing worked. Other emulators work okay. The best option if you really want a game is to use an eGPU on the Thunderbolt 4 port. Here's a mini PC together with an RTX 4070 Super eGPU. 
The code Compile benchmark shows similar performance to an Intel i9-12900H. But that's not the case in Adobe Photoshop, where it's noticeably behind. This Mini should handle 4K video projects in Adobe Premiere pretty well, but the Ryzen 75 45U coming out ahead here is pretty damn surprising. The Kingston SSD isn't a good performer in the 3 d Mark storage benchmark and falls below average. The bigger problem is the lack of cooling, which means it runs hot, and the drive thermal throttled under load. Adding a heatsink is definitely recommended. Bluetooth range is dismal on this Mini, the worst on the chart. Thankfully though, wireless at 12 meters or 39 feet using the 5G band was usable without dropping out or latency issues. Intel's higher end 13th gen chips don't seem to do too well with idle power draw. And while the maximum power draw here isn't too bad, it's not great for the performance on offer. The maximum CPU temp holds up well, staying under 90C. But that comes with a lot of fan noise under load, with a top of 47 dBA recorded. Together with its whiny pitch, this Mini is definitely not for those who are irritated by fan noise and reminds me of the louder Intel Nux from back in the day. While it is one of the smallest mini PCs we've looked at, the Minix N713 comes back with various drawbacks we've already gone over. Mashing the delete key on startup gets you into the BIOS. Wake on LAN and power settings are available in boot. That's about it. As with most Minix minis, the BIOS has very few options available. The mini PC checklist hits the 0.2 version with this video and an additional 10 items are added. Thanks for the suggestions. I think this is getting pretty close to the final checklist. Anyway, with the first 10, the Minix N713 does check most boxes. It has a nice metal case, compact power supply, and both USB-C PD and USB 4. However, it's not easy enough to open thanks to the lid holding on tightly with nowhere to latch onto. While the CPU performs fine, it doesn't compare well against the competition with especially weak integrated graphics. Bluetooth range is really poor. The N713 is only available as a pre-build, and that's with a high price tag. It didn't pass the audio latency test. I didn't find a page with easy to access driver support, and BIOS updates seem to only come if there's an issue that needs to be addressed, and are found on the official forum. Minix provides a two year warranty, which is nice and longer than the regular one year. There's no cooling for the SSDs, which is needed, and load fan noise is high. That's 12 crosses, so it gets a score of 18 out of 30 for the checklist. And that is the Minix N713, which marks the last Intel 13th Gen Mini I plan to look at. So yeah, a milestone for me. If you're interested, I've linked it in the video description, and anything you purchase from the links helps me out. Fan noise bothers me a lot, and is one of the reasons I started this channel in the first place, as I wanted to have actual data I can trust. But Minix has a silent mini PC which is pretty good, and you can check the review of it right here. Cheers!